What's going on guys? It's uh, day three here. We skipped a day. It's actually Tuesday today, but uh, yeah, I had to do some other jobs around the shop here, so I got those on the go here just waiting for parts on that. So I figured we would get uh, going on this again so it uh, can get done and be making some boost. So uh, we got all the connectors and plugins off this deal here, and I'm just gonna pull this fuel hat out and uh, slap that Walbro 450 in there. I'm not really gonna use any of the factory uh, inputs or outputs or any of that stuff because it's all steel and I don't care to adapt to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill my own two holes with bulkhead fittings and then run my two lines out of there and be done with that. Um, yeah, so I know some people have been asking about Fortorado. Um It's got some big plans going on here. We got uh, some fancy suspension pieces and parts going here. Um, yeah. So, give me a little bit with that, and uh, I'll make a little video on what we did over the years, because I didn't really make any videos over the summer. So, I'll show you guys what's going on with that thing here in another video. And then, uh, here's my car, it's also all done, and I didn't really make any videos on the YouTube about this either, but uh, there's the new turbo, 92 millimeter. Um, but yeah, anyways, enough about that shit. Let's get on with this thing, and uh, I'll get this fuel hat out here guys and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. All right, well, there is the fuel hat out of this thing here. So what I'm gonna try to do is remove all the junk that's the factory shit here. And I'm gonna try to basically replace this guy here with the wall bro. Might have to do some hacking and fitting and stuff, but I wanna keep the bucket so that I don't get fuel slosh because I did that on my very first build and actually blew up a motor um, by starving the pump because these pickups are closer to the front of the tank than they are at the back. So when you're at quarter tank and you pin it, you basically starve this fuel system of uh, fuel to the pump, so then it just basically gets air, and you have detonation, and things go boom, boom, bang, and you have a blown up motor. So I'm gonna try to keep this this time. I said last time I chopped it all up and ended up just having the pumps hang from nothing. So we're gonna try to keep the basket, run one, blah, blah, run one Walbro 450 in this, and uh, yeah, I'll show you here when I get it all snapped apart. Just watching some uh, boosted lifestyle here on the YouTubes. This is eight turbo Mustang. But uh, yeah, get out of here. Alrighty, well I got her all apart here. As you can see, this system was a deadhead style, so it didn't have a return line coming back. It actually does it all in this uh, contraption here. Um, this is basically your pressure relief valve. It vents the gases to your evap solenoid that goes to your intake. We don't have that shit anymore, so you don't need that. Here's the stock pump. And sock, it kind of actually is funny how the sock kind of goes up and it's way up inside the uh, basket there, but whatever, we don't need that anymore. Um, here's a factory uh, pressure regulator, so that's basically goes into here and controls the pressure on that, and then it allows whatever pressure you don't use to return on the factory deadhead system, but we're not using any of that shit. So, we gotta get our pump here. It's our Walbro 450. It's actually a TI Automotive, I don't know why. But they must have bought Walbro and that's how it works. But anyways, so I think there's a little bit of a size difference between these two fuel pumps, which is funny because I think this is actually smaller, but yet it flows like four times as much. I can get the stupid bag off this thing. So there is the stock fuel pump next to this tiny little Walbro that does 450 liters per hour. So I'm gonna to try to make this thing fit in that so it works factory. I will uh, show you what I come up with here in just a sec. All right guys, um, so we decided to change some of the wiring so we could run it under the uh, intake here. So we got that all loomed up and well, taped up or whatever and we're gonna put some loom on it. And then right now we're just running the big power wire for the relay. And uh, yeah, it's gonna go back here. I got the relay already in there. I got the stock fuel pump uh, power wire as a trigger for the relay so that'll turn the relay on and then basically the power wires come out of the hat right here and this is our new feed line and then uh, the return I'm just going to clamp onto that because it's not going to have any pressure really on it it'll stay on there so we're just going to test that out we just got to run the power wire up to the front um, Steve just went to go get a fuse inline fuse connector so we can plug it onto this guy here It'll be hot all the time, but it won't be any connection until that uh, trigger wire turns on and sends power to the uh, relay or whatever. 
So I kind of screwed up and I was supposed to show you guys what I did with the, the fuel hat. But basically, um, it's just got the fuel pump hung inside the stock um, basket. And then there's a return line that goes down inside and also drops right beside the fuel fill. So it's never ever actually blasting the fuel out of the basket and you know airing it up and all that stuff. So it's actually gonna keep a good supply to the fuel pump there because you can actually suck air into those and then uh, you get air bubbles up here and that's no good because uh, you'll get lean and you'll blow her up. Ask me how I know. But uh, yeah, when we get this all on here, I'll show you guys we're gonna test the fuel system here quick. Uh, once we get that fuel, it's a fuse tap uh, connector dealio. And then, uh, yeah, I'll uh, get back to you then. All right, well, uh, we got the intake back on here. Um, all the wiring that used to run from this big knob of stuff here used to go up and over and then run over top of the intake and then go back down uh, under the firewall there. That's actually underneath the intake right here. So it kind of just gives it a cleaner look. Um, and it's easier to take the intake off if you have to service um, anything on the top of the engine. You can basically just take the intake off without having to screw out of a bunch of wires. I did it on my old uh, white truck and uh, it works really good. Um, we do got the turbo sitting on here, just checking out how things fit, what we're gonna do with the piping. Um, keeping the AC, of course. Um, the air filter does fit, it's very tight. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with um, the outlet of the turbo, cause it is kind of in a weird place. So we're gonna have to figure something out, but you know how it goes, guys. It's turbo LS, it always works out. and. Uh, Yes, yeah, so we already tested the fuel system. Um, we turned it on, we had fuel come out, we washed out the fuel lines because we don't want any crap going in our injectors because that's always the shittiest thing is when you first do fuel lines and everything, there's a bunch of crap lines. Even if you clean it out really good, you always actually end up with shit going into your fuel injectors. So it's nice just to run some gas through the lines before you actually let it go into the rail. Um, so we just basically need a plug for the end of that regulator. And then we got the um, return line, we got to run that still. But you can see under here, we have Steve's fancy blue zip ties, of course. He's got to have his blue zip ties. But we got a small uh, 100 micron uh, fuel filter there. You definitely want that. Nothing worse than getting shit in your injectors. So those just run and fall along the frame there. It actually kind of sits nice in this factory little connectors. And that all comes back to here. I got a light. So you can see, basically, we got the return hooked on here. Oh. And then uh, here's the feed line. Um, we hooked up some of the EVAP stuff. We did just put a filter on this uh, really felt because we're not going to use this stock EVAP solenoid anymore. It's not hooked up to the intake. And that's actually where um, we're going to get our boost reference from now. So we don't need that. And then here's the relay here for this. We put out the back. It's easier to do when it's back here and run one power wire back. And then, uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for the fuel system here, I think. In the uh, next videos, we'll be doing some of the wastegate stuff because I don't have a wastegate plumb nuts. I don't know if we're gonna go off to the turbo or not. I kinda didn't want to, but it's just the easiest way to do it. So I uh, found my fancy little pipe I had on my car. This is my very first turbo kit that I had on my Mustang. So basically we're just gonna cut one of these guys off here for this wastegate and uh, this is just like a tile uh, MVS ripoff or whatever, or MVR, I can't remember which one, but it's one of the tile copies and it works fine, it's our hundred bucks. So we'll use that. And then, uh, yeah. I think that's gonna do it for this video anyways, guys. So uh, yeah, you know the deal. Get out in the garage, start working on something. Cause it's like I always say, no one gives a shit. If you're talking about shit, you don't actually do. All right guys, see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.